we go. No problem. All right. We welcome you to church tonight, and uh, I, I still rejoice over the great service. I will say I was very convicted during the message. I considered getting my wife an iPhone for Christmas, and I've confessed that sin, Brother Panera. And uh, so we appreciate that message this morning. Let's pray, and we'll commit this service to our Savior. Our Father, we're so thankful for your greatness. And uh, Lord, your goodness, you're a mighty God, and what a, tr a tremendous privilege to serve you. We thank you for the wonderful day, the lives, Lord, that you changed, the souls that were saved and those that were baptized. And tonight we commit this service to you from start to finish. Do a great work in our midst, we ask now. Be with the choir as they sing. May we sense your presence upon all that takes place. For we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. together 316 please 316 in your songbooks oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord 316 oh come we all ye faithful as the choir joins us sing that for us together oh come
Lapel fellas, if you can find, excuse me, if you can find that. Thank you, and uh, please don't fault them. My goodness, I, I tell you what, when the devil fell, we used to say he fell in the choir loft. He did not fall there. He fell in the sound system, the live stream, and, and yet you always do such a great job. I can't hear a thing up here, but can you hear out there? Is that uh, it's okay? Can you hear out there? Is that okay? All right, we'll just try it like this here. Thank you. Uh, Jojo Clada, God bless you and your family. You're right back here. I missed you this morning, but you're there. And uh, your husband, a great preacher, we're glad you're here yesterday for the wedding. And I looked right past you this morning. The Donahoe's, good to have you home. And they're miss our missionary appointees. And we're glad to have you uh, with us in church today and Christmas season. The uh, gardeners are right down here in the front. Patsy worked here for years in our elementary school. and. Brother Bob with the mechanics and did just such a great work. They were up in Idaho, retired, but we miss you. We're glad you're here. And uh, I saw Brother Mark Matre, where are you at? Mark, 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 Mark. You have your mom and dad right here and your sister and brother-in-law from Ireland. And we're glad you're with us tonight and throughout the house, one right after another. Well, I jumped up and girls, you ready to sing? Okay, we'll have you come right now. This is the, uh, uh, the uh, Wynn girls, and there was four of them. One got married, so you girls sang, please. What will linger 
are the moments spent, my Lord, just worshiping you. Lord, I want your presence for Christmas. I want your presence for Christmas. I long to feel your spirit speaking peace to my heart. Of all the gifts I may receive, there's only Wonderful ladies. God bless you. Thank you so much. Well, every year at this time, we enjoy the Christmas gift to Jesus. And in a moment, this will be our evening offering. And so the ushers will not come and pass the plates. It really began 40, um, I think 47 years ago. We would publish a list and hear some of the things or suggestions we need. All the buses need brooms. Our we need this kind of oil for the buses, or we need electrical cords, or vacuum cleaners, or diapers in the nursery. And, and people would always bring a wrapped gift, Brother Manley, you would remember those days, many of you, and deacons afterwards, folks would stay and would look at them and uh, see what was given, numerous things. In addition, many of us would, uh, instead of a gift like that, just bring a, our tithe and offering, our offerings to missions, or a Christmas offering there. Well, it's evolved again. Most of you, I think, give online. And so for you to sit there is going to be embarrassing. I don't want anyone embarrassed. Here's how it works. In a moment, uh, Pastor Flood will be down over here and Pastor Reamer here. We'll go section by section. And if you're going to do your tithing tonight, these offering envelopes, are the plates are here, and you can put that in there. If you've already done online, come anyway. Don't even just sit there unless for some health reason you need to sit, and uh, bring an envelope right there, just a blank envelope. I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed, like, I don't have any money. Nobody carries money anymore. Uh, so I understand that. It's always a fun time. We sing great time. We sing Christmas carols with Mother Martina. So, uh, Brother Reamers, if you'll make your way here, and Brother Flood there in a moment, they'll have this section and this st section stand up in the balconies. You try to filter in any way you can. Uh, along the way. We're going to exit. Brother Reamers, you're exiting that way. Brother, Brother um, uh, uh, Flood, we're going to have you exit that way, and he'll show you how to come around. Br bring a visitor card. Bring a, uh, bring a hair clip. I don't care what you want to bring. I just don't want you sitting there like, okay, uh, and it never anybody does, unless for some reason you're struggling with walking, and we totally understand that. What page are we singing, Brother Mar Martinez? 320. 320, let's have this section and this section stand. Follow these preachers, they'll tell you when we stand and how we get back. We'll sing a stanza too of many songs tonight as we come and give our Christmas gift to Jesus. Ring the bells on the first. Ring the bells, ring the bells. Let the whole world go.
Saints and Christmas carols around this season. Thank you so much for participating in that Christmas gift to Jesus. At this time, if we can actually have our ushers, if we've missed you with a bulletin, ushers, if we can, bring those through the house at this time, if you would. And that would be a tremendous help. We'll just go through a couple uh, different announcements, just some important information about our church. Uh, probably none more important than, uh, if you have your bulletin there, number three, which is baked goods and hot chocolate right after the service this evening. And so because of the weather, we moved that to the first floor of the commons. And so right inside the lobby of the commons, you want to make sure that you grab that. And if you're going to see some Christmas lights or you're driving somewhere, that would be the very first stop. Before you go see the lights, you want to stop and get yourself some hot chocolate and some baked goods. And so that'll be a tremendous help as we're giving that to the third grade NVBS class. And then if you can make note number two there, we all know that the Christmas on the buses, we're going to do that this coming Saturday, the 23rd. And we'll begin the classes at 10 o'clock or 10 o'clock there. And so we have a great time and great things planned for them. And so all of the workers were already informed of that. But please pray for that if you would. And all the riders and even talking to them this morning, they are very excited. And it's a good thing for our bus families that we get to be a help to them. And then also we'll have New Year's on the buses on Friday the 29th. So we're looking forward to all of those. On the back side of your bulletin, just a few more things. Number six, if you're scheduling a bucket fundraiser, would you please let the office know? And the information is listed there. We just want to make sure that we're able to announce it properly and make sure that we're able to communicate that to the church. And then number eight, we want to make sure that you're aware of this. On Sunday, the very last day of 2023, it happens to be a Sunday this year, and on December 31st, we'll have the evening service and something great planned. And then right following the service, we have an event planned like none other. And Brother Houston, thank you so much for allowing the staff men to play the NVBS varsity team. And he did that mainly so that he doesn't have to play in the game himself. He can just coach. And so but we are going to have some great time there. And so we've already heard some trash talking from some of your players. And so we're looking forward to making sure they know who is going to, they are probably going to win. But it'll be a great time and a great activity there. And then during the halftime of that, uh, we have uh, something great planned as well. I'll make another announcement about that probably next week. And uh, something that you want to stick around and, uh, and be a part of. And then also during that time, really the, the point of that event is to have a great time for our bucket fundraisers. And so if you want to schedule a booth, we have the entire first floor of the commons designated uh, for the booths and for all the different bucket ministries. And so if you want to sell, please let me know. My email is listed there just so we can reserve a spot for you. And so we have it available. We'll set up a table for you in the first floor of the commons. It'll be kind of like a, a, a farmer's market style. It'll be all set up. We'll move all the chairs. And so it'll be a great time for our church on Sunday, December 31st. And then also number nine is another bucket fundraiser, a little Princess Day Out. And please let Mrs. Raisley know, and her phone number is listed there from the three-year-olds to the third grade. And then as well as there is a separate activity for the th fourth through eighth grade. Uh, and they have something planned for that's age appropriate there for the Little Princess Day Out. We're looking forward to that. There's a song of the year. 315, please. 315. As we sing the first verse, children, you get ready to be dismissed. 315. Oh, we'll sing that first as the kids come now. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's
in Psalm 78. The McCurries are up on the balcony from Kansas, and we welcome you here tonight. And I, this first time you've seen baby Matthew, is that right? You've seen him before. Okay, that's right, I know. In Kansas. He looks different in California. And Brother Lico, welcome home from Nevada. We're good to see you here tonight. People will be coming and going Wednesday night. We have a great service. We're in the Luke chapter 2. And um, instrumentals, just stay there a moment, if you will, please. But uh, we'll um, look forward to Wednesday night. There's two more Wednesdays. Next Sunday morning and Sunday night, I, with two great services are planned. Uh, Sunday morning at 1030, a big family service. We'll have the nurseries available. We'll have preschool, but all the kids, everybody comes in on here. And we will have already had the bus kids on Saturday. So we look forward to a big family service. You're going to really love it. And it's going to be so, so amazing. And then Sunday night at 6 o'clock, and please don't hold a stopwatch to me, but it's about an hour Christmas Eve service, a candlelight service, and uh, something your kids can uh, and participate in as well. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful night together. We're in Psalm 78, and I never look. Uh, I, I preach so much during a week. Uh, five days a week on the radio and then a sixth day on an hour broadcast and then a live broadcast and then uh, elementary and high school and college chapel and a preacher boys class and Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So I, I, I we, they keep track. They have every message I've ever preached here. But I know I was in this text just recently. I want to say it was for parent baby dedication. That was just two weeks ago. I'm not sure that's when it was. But I'm not preaching the same uh, message, believe me. And, uh, but there's a truth I want us to get ready for 2024 to help us. Next week will be more like Christmas. But I want you to follow with me in Psalm 78, please. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. <clears throat> we will not hide them from their children, nor showing their generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them unto their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God, the children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot his works and his wonders, which he showed them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers, in the land of Egypt, and the, and the, uh, uh, I keep stumbling over words, and the reason is I mark my Bible so much I can't find what that word is underneath all my markings here. So whatever it is, I can't see in a zone. I see that, but there's a word before that. And so I apologize for that. Someone once said, mark your Bible and let your Bible mark you. But now I've just got my Bible marked. I've got lines everywhere, most of these pages. And uh, so I, 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 whatever that word is there, it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> he divided the sea and caused it to pass through and made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime, he also led them with a cloud, and all night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused the waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned, yet more against him, by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God and said, can, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock. The rivers gushed out and the streams overflowed. 
Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger also came up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above, he opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down manna upon them to eat, and he given them corn of heaven, and, and, and man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused the east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind, and he rained flesh upon them as dust, and the feathered flower, fowls like the sand of the sea. And, and he let it all fall in the midst of their camp, and round about their habitation, and, and they did eat, and were well filled, and he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust. But while the, their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fat of them and smote them down and chosen men of Israel. They, for all they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, they sought him, and they returned and inquired early of God. And they remembered that God was their rock, and high God their redeemer. Would you stand with me, please, and read verse 36 and 37, our verses tonight, please. Thank you for your patience with that long scripture. Our message comes from 37, but I'd like us to read 36 and 37. They go together. Look what these people did. Shall we read? Ready? Begin. Nevertheless, let's bow for prayer. Father, we're so very thankful tonight for the privilege of hearing your word proclaimed and read tonight. We're grateful for your people. Lord, just to watch them come by and deposit these love gifts, we're so very grateful. Bless the children's ministry and the other property. It's packed tonight as they have their uh, musical. And I pray for Pastor Sloan as he preaches over there that God, in a mighty way, you'd use him for your glory. I do thank you for our Spanish ministry and how it's really uh, taken off and it's just uh, growing week by week. We thank you for what you're doing there. Bless our time around the Word of God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
Would a lamb be born? He is the great I am, the sacrificial lamb who takes away the sins of the world. A bed of straw. so much. and the instrumentalists will allow you to go ahead and be seated right now. Simon, thank you for working so diligently on that. I, I, I wish you knew what a difficult time. <laughs> it just, it happens. But uh, they, they've done a great job to get that thing si fixed tonight, at least to get to this point. As the um, folks come around, we're in Psalm 78 tonight. And I know I just prayed. I like to pray again. And I'd ask you this week to be in prayer for the uh, great Temple Baptist Church in Knoxville. Brother Clarence Sexton uh, passed away this week, and uh, just a great pastor. Preached here many, many times, and Crown College. And uh, it's a very sad picture I saw today. They had a beautiful uh, roses that were there where he sits, and his cane was there. And uh, just a, we, we, we're, uh, to lose great men of God like that's very difficult to see. Lost another great soul winner this week, probably the greatest soul winner America's ever seen, or perhaps one of the greatest, Dr. C.W. Fisk. And I uh, just saw him in Texas. I was preaching there, just a great man. And a uh, great soul winner. He was led to Christ in 1960, and he got it as soon as he, as a businessman. And he just went soul winning every single day, winning people to Christ. And uh, what a great man. And uh, we lost Patch the Pirate this year. And there's just so many. And I hope that you realize that the cause of Christ needs you. 
God takes one, but he always raises up others. And perhaps he's raising you up. And uh, we need to say yes to God. Our Father, I, I love these people so much. And I think they know that. I believe they know that. And I pray that this thought tonight would help them like it's helped me over the last two, three, four weeks to see this. May we confront this question that's before us tonight. And I pray that you would speak to our hearts directly. God, may our hearts be soft right now, tender, open to the word of God. I pray your blessing upon these few moments together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to challenge you tonight to answer this question before you embark uh, on 2024. In two weeks from tonight, at this time, we'll just be hours away from the stroke of midnight, and 2024 will be upon us. And uh, they say the older you get, time flies, but I'm still getting ready for Y2K. Uh, it's hard to believe how fast time goes, just how fast it is. Many of you were not even born when in 1997 and 98, 99, they said the whole world's coming to crash because our computers do not know how to move over to the next, uh, the, uh, the next uh, 100 years to the 2000s. And oh, they just, a millennial actually, they just knew that there was going to be chaos everywhere. And they were telling us how bad things are. Nothing ever happened. Normally doesn't happen when they tell you something's going to happen anyway. Sort of like the weatherman. In my next life, I'm going to be a weatherman. You're always right. It's about 50% right half the time. The Swansons, I'm so sorry I missed you. And David, I see you right there, and I missed you. Uh, I'll get all of you before the night's over visiting. But, uh, but, uh, but before us tonight is a question that you have to answer. You may need to answer it one night all alone this week. I hope you'll answer it tonight. I like it this season of the year, and I get up almost every night, and um, I like uh, going by the Christmas tree or by the lights and, and, uh, and not necessarily read. Sometimes I'll read my Bible and study, but I just like to sit there and ponder and meditate and think. Uh, it's a big time of me. I've been reviewing my calendar for this year, and I'm looking ahead to next year. But everything that I want God to do in my life and I want to be available for what he wants to do is answered in this one chapter and this one verse. It all starts not with God, but with me. He asked the question to me in verse number 37, their heart was not right with him. Neither did they steadfast, uh, steadfast in his covenant. My question to you and my question to myself tonight, is your heart right with God? Is it right with God? I can help you with some of that. If our hearts are not right with one another, they're not right with God. Because this relationship here always reveals this relationship here. And when I die to myself and my pride and, and humble myself under the mighty hand of God, when I'm humble before God and humble before man, that means things are going to be right this way and they will always be right this way. Most people do not live that way. We live, and you hear the word all the time, in a narcissistic society. Amen. It's all about me. I don't care if it hurts my children. I don't care if it offends my mate. I don't care if I lose my job over it. It's all about me. And if I don't like it, I'll boycott you. I'll blast you online. I'll give you terrible reviews. I'll say wicked things about you, even if they're not true, because I don't like you. That's the day we live in. And we're living in that day this way, and it's, it's expanding the further we get away from God. And we've always been getting away from God. But I tell you, these last three and a half years, it's been amazing how we have rejected God. Just amazing as a country. And how we call evil good and good evil. 
to think that we, we think that little children should be taught that they're not male or female and to mutilate their bodies without parental consent and to have them have abortions without a parent's consent and say, don't go home and tell your parents what you're learning in school here. And, and all the evilness that's going on. In Washington, D.C., no one can speak without swearing. Men and women. And I've often said it's a feeble mind that's trying to express themselves forcefully that has to swear. What a day we live in evil. Good is called wrong and wrong is called right. But my question is not so much about what's going on around me. What is my relationship with an almighty God? Is my heart right with God? And you've heard this explanation so many times. The, the, our, our heart is located in our brain. I know we have a physical heart that beats every, every second. Those four ounces of blood go flowing through our body. But our brain is like a walnut. It looks like a walnut, Brother Carl, wherever you are. And it's three pounds. They say maybe 2.6 to 3.2 pounds is our brain. And our brain is divided. There's many sexes to our brain, but you talk about being fearfully and wonderfully made. In that little three pounds are 12 billion cells. And those 12 billion cells are connected to 10,000 uh, 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 connectors, which means in this brain there is 120 trillion connections and cells. And yeah, just think it, it all evolved. I mean, that is, that is sheer stupidity. God, in the beginning, God, and he began to make, and he made male and female, made, he made. Amen. And, and this brain of ours is divided into sections. There's the intellect, and many of you have done much more study, and a lot of you doctors and nurses, you know much more about this than I would ever know. But the intellect, and, and then we have the emotional center of our life is located there. And then we have the heart. It's the real you. Our brain allows us to, to smell. It all comes from our brain. We, we smell and we hear and we think and we can formulate ideas and opinions in our brain. And that's why it's so important to protect this. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And we say harsh things to one another, but that's already been planted in our heart because what's in our heart comes out. That's why God, our Lord, says, they said, well, the Lord said, what, what's, what's the great commandment? They try to stump them. And they said, well, Matthew 22, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. The second is like unto the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's why in life we give our hearts to our mates and we give our hearts to our children and our children should give their hearts back to their parents and a pastor should give his heart to his people and vice versa and in the home and in the work, whatever it might be. And tonight the question is, my heart, is it right with God? Adam's heart was not right with God. Because Adam said, God, you did not give me enough. You have all these other trees. I want that one that you told me I can't have. His heart was not right. It was lifted up with pride. And Eve's heart was lifted up with pride. Judas, who sat next to Jesus, he handled the money bag. He must have been a trusted soul. But somehow his heart got cold and wrong and indifferent toward God. And they came and conspired, and he said, I'll sell Jesus. I'll show you who he is for 30 pieces of silver. That was the price of a slave. And they paid him the 30 pieces of silver. Why? 
because his heart was not right with God. He saw money as the avenue to make happiness and success in his life. I think of Achan who did the same. I think of Gehazi who did the same. They, they saw clothing, a Babylonian garment, and they saw a wedge of silver, and they saw some gold, and they said, that's what I want. Really, if we're going to be honest with ourselves tonight, what about your heart? What about your heart? Does God have it? Does God have my heart? Uh, Jeremiah 17, 6, the heart is deceitful above air, all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart can become so cold and so carnal and so backward against God. It's so easy to get trapped. And when we get trapped, we'll say no to God on everything. I'm not going to do that. We'll say no to mankind. I'm my own boss. I'll run to the beat of my own drum. I am not going to obey God. And we've all, including this pastor, have been there. How weak we are. As we close out 2023, 20, where's your heart? Joseph had 10 brothers and himself. There was 11. And those 10 brothers, eventually they had a, he found out he had another brother he didn't know about. And Joseph, in chapter 37 of Genesis, told him a dream. He said, and he was the baby of the family. He said, boys, my, my, my dream was that you're, you're going to bow down one day to me. <laughs> and they hated him. The Bible says repeatedly, they hated him, they hated him, they hated him. Those 10 older brothers, dad said, I'm on a mission to go see those brothers. And they said, the dreamer cometh, and we hate him. They conspired together. They said, let's kill him. And the eldest brother, Reuben, said, no, let's not kill him. Let's take that coat that his daddy made for him, special coat. We never got a coat like that. You know, envy and jealousy and pride can destroy a life. And they said, let's, let's put him in that pit. And then let's put blood on his coat and take it back to dad and said, somebody, some wild animal killed him. They sold him for 20 pieces. And they went back home and told the old, old elderly father he's dead, but he wasn't dead. He was gone for a year and then gone for, he went from that pit and wound up working in the palace and from the palace they made false accusation and went to the prison. But in time, years goes by and they, they elevate him because he could tell a dream because God gave him some influence there. And, and they elevated him, he became second command. And now 20 some years go by and there's, there's a need for corn in Egypt. And these 10 brothers, they came and they stood before their brother. You know the story. It's my favorite Old Testament story. Chapter 37 through chapter 50 of Genesis. You'll read about it in just a few days, January 1st. They did not realize that was their brother. Been 20 plus years. He had changed. They never thought he'd be there. One time he had a banquet for them. Before they sent him back to his dad with their, with, with their bags filled with corn and, and, and the various things that he put inside. And he said, let me, let me put you, Reuben, you sit here. I said, wow, he knew I was the eldest. Uh, Simeon, you sit here. What's going on? I'm the second. Judah, you sit right over here. And he organized those ten brothers by their age. He sent him back home, and you know what happened. He said, I'm not going to do this again unless you bring your brother. He told, they told me I had a brother. They stood before him. In chapter 45, he says to the Egyptians, get out. Please get out. He went into another room. He began to sob. Those were his brothers, all 11. His little brother Benjamin he'd never seen before. And they heard him weeping. Now, what in the world's going on? And he walked out. I just, I love reading this. Man, 
I am Joseph, your brother, which you sold into bondage. And fear came upon their hearts. And they said, no, no, don't, don't fear. God sent me here for your good. We're going to get daddy and we're going to bring him back. Can you imagine what those boys face in the music? Here's a boy in bondage, kept his heart right, and here to, uh, ten boys that lied and lied for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year, for a, a, a decade, for two decades, kept lying to their dad. And now the music, they have to face it. I want to ask you, is your heart right with God? Is there something we're covering tonight that's not right? Is there something that needs to get confessed tonight? My Bible speaks about feigning ourselves, F-E-I-G-N. It's to fake, it's to phony. And when I pray, I, I go to God in prayer, and you will not know how. I said, Lord, I don't want, I, I, I pray, I don't want to be theatrical. I don't want to be a, a showman. I don't want to just be a, 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 a speaker. God, I, is my heart clean before you? Am I right before you, God? I want a heart that can bring honor to God. And, and am I faking this? Am I a phony God? I don't want that. I want to be true with you. Amen. The Bible speaks of the fact that they watched him. In chapter 20 of verse Luke, in Luke, they watched him. They watched Jesus and sent forth spies and they feigned themselves to be just men that they may take him by the words of their mouth, but they found nothing wrong in Jesus. Why? Because his heart was right with the Father. I always do those things that please my Father. Tonight, as we get ready to close, I, I want to ask you, is your heart right with God? The heart is the, is the real you. It's the real me. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it true? I mean, it's the heart I know, but my wife doesn't know. It's the heart that she knows, but I don't know. And, and this week we will celebrate 51 years of marriage. I know that lady, and she knows me. But we both know things about ourselves that the other, either one probably doesn't know. That's life. Kids, are you a phony with your parents? Are you just playing the games? Are you just obeying the rules at home to get out and do your own thing? Are we obeying the rules in a school just to, to get away from here? And, and, and finally, I'm going to live it up. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to run to the beat of my own draw. And, draw. and we've been here long enough, my goodness, 40, almost 48 years. Uh, we've seen kids that were in the nursery 48 years ago that are now 48 years old. We see kids that were 10 years of age and now they're in the late 50s, early 60s, 12 years of age and they're retiring. But it's an amazing thing what you see a lifetime, how people always reveal who they really are. Time has a way of revealing our heart. Staff member, is your heart right with God? Pastor, is your heart right with God? Deacon, is your heart right with God? That prayer page of mine, I, I was looking at it so much, and, and my son-in-law, Brother Panera, knows that he's supposed to shred my prayer journal. It's very large. But I got thinking this week, I wouldn't mind them seeing it, except for those pages of backslidden people. I won't want them ever to see the names of people that are away from God. I'm going to give them the page numbers. I don't know, maybe my prayer journal one day will bring comfort to my family, but not those pages. I do not like getting to those pages. This boy, this girl, this man, this woman, this person, this person, away from God. 
this one incarcerated, this one in jail, this one in drugs, this one a God hater, this one living in adultery, this one living as a sodomite, this one living wrong. That, that wounds a pastor. And yet I have, I have notes from people through the years, I love God, I love God, but time always reveals our heart. Some of you here, you've had a heart that's been cold your whole life and you're just getting into church and God has your heart and you see, you're beating yourself up what, what you missed out. Oh no, you can have a good heart tonight. Amen. And live with a heart that's right. And, and God's ask, asking these people uh, for their heart. Their heart was not right with him. Oh, they flattered him with the mouth. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, God is so good. Oh, yes. I just want to be a humble servant, all that. But God knows the heart. Church members, the heart real. Teenager, how about your heart? When uh, I grew up not far from here, and in 1954, this song came out. We'd sing it in church. I, I can hear... So a lot of these songs my parents singing as a duet in church. How about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. Is it black with sin? Is it pure within? Could you ask Christ in to stay? People often see you just the way you are. But Jesus really knows us, doesn't he? And he sees inside. How about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. Listen to this stanza. Fred, how would you feel if your heart were made with a window on each side so that all could see just not outward charm but detect the inward heart? Tonight, our heart is revealed by one, our love for God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. I hope it's more than a song. I, oh, how I love Jesus. What words could I find to tell Jesus I love him? When was the last time you just adored him? We sing, oh, come let us adore. I just adored him and thanked him and, and for his grace and his mercy. Or is it always prayer? Just give me, give me, give me. It, it, when was the last time that we just spent time Saying, Lord, I love you. You see, when you love someone, it reveals the heart. I love that lady. Not been as good as I should have been all these years. A lot of failures in my life and missed opportunities and a lot of apologies I've had to give. And I think she knows I love her. And I'll do anything I can to help her. And I know she loves me and she has proven it. But God says, I want you to love me. Tonight, when your heart is right, you'll know that I do love the Lord. I fail, but I love him. Secondly, about your heart, it's going to be pure. Not just love, but pure. Purity. The, the Word of God says in 1 Timothy 1, 5 and 2, 2 and, and 1 Peter 1, 22, that we serve God out of a pure heart, a clean heart. Is our heart pure? Or is it dirty within? Does the world see just clean and we inside, we look inside, we know things are there that should not be there. Pastor and people alike. A love for God. Pure before God. And then thirdly, we see it's a heart that's free from evil. In Hebrews 3.12, it says that, that instead of evil, our heart is full of faith. If you're not a person of faith and walking by faith, believing God and trusting God, something has entered your heart. And then number four, we find, is it a strong heart? If our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. My heart condemns me. It just condemns me. But I have to realize I'm accepted in the beloved. And then number five, is it a single heart? In Colossians chapter three, it speaks of singleness of heart. Paul emphasized this one thing I do, 
That's what Jesus did. Uh, for this cause came I into the world, to die on the cross for sinners. As I approach 2024, I want it to be singleness of heart. I don't want to waste the time God gives me. I don't want to flitter away the time God gives me. I want it to count, and I want it to be for singleness of heart. And then is it a loving heart for the people of God? Paul says in Philippians 1, 7, ye know that I love you. A lot of things I've not been for you, I know. But I'll tell you one thing, I know that you can't find anybody that would have loved you more. I, Brother Tony Hutchinson called me tonight. He's all fired up. He told me what he preached this morning. He told me what he's preaching tonight. I said, man, I wish I'd, that would have been a great message for me next week to preach Sunday morning. That's a, that is an incredible message. But you know, Tony Hudson, they just think, ah, he's rip snorting. He gave me outline within the outline, within the outline, within the outline. I mean, you talk about, uh, uh, you talk about understanding the scriptures. And I said, I believe I'm going to have a good time with this tonight. I said, I believe you're going to. It's just a great message he's preaching. And I hung up the phone and said, now my people need preaching like that. But I can't even talk like Tony Hudson. He's from Tennessee. He's country. He just has that draw. My mind doesn't think like Tony Hudson. And things like that, I, I wish I could be some of these other preachers for you, but I'm going to tell you this. I know I've loved you. And that's what God's command to me as a shepherd is to love his people. And I'm out of time. It's a burden heart. In Romans 10, verse 1, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that she might be saved. I'm burdened for our country. I'm so burdened for it. Our burden for our churches in America, they're changing so quickly. I'm just so burdened for them. But tonight, you have to ask the question, what's your heart like? Jack Trevor, what's your heart like? The, psalm, the, 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 the writer of Lamentations, search me, O oh God. Know my heart today. The psalm writer said, try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. I, I don't mean this humorous at all. I say it every year said to my wife repeatedly, January 1st so far, I've, I've not missed an opportunity to tithe, to give, to serve. I've not sinned one time in 2024. And I'm going to, Brother Doug, I'm going to try to go as far as I can into the year. And living for God, I've never got out of January 1st without messing up. Never. And she's laughing there because she tries to provoke me. And she said, oh, you're about ready to get upset. You're about ready to lose it there. You're about ready to sin, Jack. Well, she calls me Dr. Treeper, But uh, no, she doesn't. But, but she goes, you're about ready. And I said, you are provoking me. That's a woman's job, Brother, uh, brother, uh, brother Coffin. I'm just preaching what you said at men's prayer meeting last night. <laughs> Look at him lean over to his wife. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> He didn't say it. He didn't say it. But you just were looking at me. You know, in school, when the, the, the teacher would say, I'm looking for it. And if I didn't know the answer, I'd always put my head down. And that's a key to a teacher say, he doesn't know, call on him. And so, no, nonetheless, that's, I, I, I saw you. How about our hearts tonight? W would you spend some time tonight and this week? Let's just examine your heart. I, I want to. I'd like to be for you and for my wife and for our children and our 14 grandkids. I'd like to be their very best for everybody. I'm going to have to get my heart completely empty of myself to glorify his name. And you'll be the benefactors. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, I thank you for tonight, the Christmas gift to Jesus, so inspiring to watch people come and give. I pray that tonight we would use this altar. God, I'm doing my best to try to get people ready for 2024. I want us to be a good church, a clean church. 
but it may start with the pastor and with the people. Let's stand together, please. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. How about search me, oh God? Know my heart today, a clean heart. God desires a clean heart. Don't gossip. Don't use the internet to hurt others. Don't spend a lot of time reading all that stuff. Be right with God. Know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. desires, some aims, some goals, some ambition as to what God would have you to do. I don't know what people are going to do to us. I know what God wants to do through us. My Father, I thank you for the people of God. And this 51st Sunday, two more remain, 53 Sundays this year, an unusual year. And I pray your blessing upon these that have come and are kneeling and those that are kneeling in the pews and praying. God, may we do everything we possible to get ready for 24. We do know that many joys are coming. Many victories are coming. We'll win folks to Christ, and there'll be graduations, and there'll be babies' births, and there'll be grandbabies' births, and there'll be weddings. But God, we know that in this auditorium, there'll be caskets as well, and sorrows, and heartaches and setbacks. May we live for you. May we please you. May we honor your name, glorify your name. That name which is above every name. The name of Jesus. Lord, I love these people. I pray they might know that. And my wife and I demonstrate it more than ever this year is our prayer. Bless all the children here tonight, the teenagers, the young people, the children's church, the nursery, the other property. God, give us safety to our homes, we pray. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Please be seated momentarily. Let's straighten up the psalm book rack, if you will. I understand Brother Chad Ith is here. You come and one of our deacons. He and his wife both are doctors, one over at Kaiser and one at Stanford. Come on, you speak to us, brother. Pastor, if I could have you stand with Mr. Stewart. Would it go down? Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Well, dear church, thank you so much for being here tonight. We have the most amazing pastor and first lady. Amen. Amen. Pastor, Mrs. T, it is my great honor and my great privilege on behalf of the great North Valley Baptist Church Happy 51st anniversary. You, you and Mrs. Treber are the most amazing couple. First of all, you are the most amazing couple of courage. Courage is not the absence of fear, but courage is doing God's work in the midst of fear. It is staying in the battle in spite of our fears, trials, and turmoil. Pastor and Mrs. T, they find God's work to be more important than their own trials and tribulations. Because of their great courage in the Lord, they are be able to be great encouragers to all those around them, here and around the world. Just talking to them encourages me. Just a simple smile, a handshake encourages me. And they... To encourage to, is to, to encourage is to give courage, and they have certainly given courage to many throughout the years. Not only are they a couple of courage, they are a couple of Christ-likeness. To be Christ-like is the ultimate goal. As Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Their heart their mind is set on Christ Jesus. Their affection is set on Christ Jesus. And their goal is to not get the glory, but to give the glory to God. Amen? Amen. They are the most humble couple I have ever met as they selflessly work 
for their sheep. And God would not be using this couple so mightily, so mightily, were it not for their humility in the Lord. They are a couple of Christ-likeness. They are a couple of courage. Pastor and Mrs. T, they are a couple of compassion. Compassion is love in action. Because of God's love in them, their love for you and their love for the church is so immense. Pastor, what you said tonight confirmed my heart for what I should say tonight. God's people is their love, and God's people is their life. And their work never ceases because their compassion for you and I never ceases. I don't know how one couple could touch so many lives here and around the world. Pastor Mrs. T, your compassion is unmatched. Your love and action is unparalleled. Your desire to see the good for others is unrelenting. How much more, Pastor Mrs. T, is your love for one another? How much more is their love for God? And how much more is the love of God in them? They are the perfect example of courage, Christ-likeness, and compassion. Happy anniversary, dear Pastor Mrs. T. If I could have Brother Alvin, dear church, let us all rise and sing happy anniversary to Pastor Mrs. T. Everybody sing it now. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. On behalf of my wife and I, we both want to thank you. Thank you very much. Good. You're such a blessing to us. And uh, as I close the year, uh, you, you know what you've done for us the last eight months. And I just were overwhelmed how you took some adversity for the first time my wife ever faced. And you were there for just day after day and helped us so much. We never want to be a burden to this church. In fact, the day we become a burden, we'll get you a younger fellow in here. But uh, you've been so good to us this year, and we literally could not have made it without you. Just all the uh, acts of kindness, all the meals you helped us with, and uh, just, just overwhelming. Well, we love you dearly. Thank you for these cards and your gifts, and thank you for today. We're really putting a great amount of effort into next Sunday. You're going to love Sunday morning, Sunday night. Be a Christmas that you won't forget. And so we look forward to seeing you. Don't forget to get your kids tonight, would you? And uh, there are some things over here. We're ready for baptism. Let's baptize. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried, and he rose again. And we thank the Lord for the baptismal. It was stirred this morning on both properties and now again tonight. This is Fernando. He came on the property during COVID. On a Saturday, Brother Evan Spray gave him a Bible. He was looking for a Bible and trusted Christ as his Savior. He's been attending on and off and watching online as he's had to go through a number of surgeries over the last few years. But we're so grateful to have him here tonight coming for baptism. Fernando, have you asked Jesus to be your Savior? Yes, I have. Upon your profession of faith and obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my brother, oh, in the name God of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried Amen. in the likeness of his death. Raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. What a wonderful testimony. And there are people searching for God. I'm so thankful you're here tonight. God bless you. Love you. You're dismissed.